go take me. a shower. Go that's take a, a shower. That's it. Go get take on, a shower. Go, go take you a shower, shower like man. Yeah. Right, man. Before you can even get in the shower, you already feeling high because you just coming in. She tripping. I know I had a problem when I came home and told my bitch. All strippers ain't hoes. <laughs> <laughs> you told her that? Ooh, I what she say? What, she what did say? she say? Oh, man. <laughs> look, look at you. Ready to be mad. What did she say? <laughs> Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. So you don't go to the strip club? You have to perform at the strip <laughs> I ain't club. Lie, I love the strip club, but my God, I don't like me going. I'm just what she be, as soon as you get home, she tripping. You smell like, you smell like cheap strip. You smell like tri- coochie and, and, and body like oil. <laughs> like, what the hell, like man? They been sitting on you. Get out of there. Get out. Go. Uh-uh. Get out of there. Go that's take a shower. Go take a shower. That's it. Go take a shower. Go take a shower. You sound like a man. cheap stripper. Right? Yeah. Hey, man. Before you can even get in the shower, you already feeling high because you just coming in. She tripping. I know I had a problem when I came home and told my bitch, all strippers ain't hoes. <laughs> <laughs> you told her that? Ooh, I know what she say? What, she what did say? she say? Oh man! <laughs> look, look at you, ready to be mad. What did she say? <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to see how you would have responded. I'm just curious. What did she say? I mean, I can't even remember what she said, man. I'm, I'm gonna say whatever come to my mind, though, man. Baby, yeah, I love it, though. Yeah, so, yeah. That runaway, runaway. That's, that's you, ain't it? Runaway. Yeah. Which one was that? Is that a song you got out? Or is it, is it niggas with your same name on here? Probably so, bro. Man, them niggas. Them I ain't gonna lie. Some niggas been doing some bullshit. I yeah. said a little nigga named MG Lil Bubba on here. Oh, damn. It was a little nigga named Bubba versus Lil Bubba. <laughs> oh, yeah. They going crazy right now. What do you do to better, better like, brand Separate yourself? Separate yourself you, from everybody else. I mean, shit. Uh, honestly, shit. Nothing. You working hard, right? Yeah, I'm working hard. Cause really, to be honest with you, Bubba Sparks to say you stole his name. Fuck Bubba Sparks. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even know who that was? Booty, 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 <laughs> rocking it. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I was just fucking with you, Bubba Sparks. <laughs> I think he lost weight, and, and when he lost weight, he kind of took his momentum away. Damn. Nah, I fuck with Bubba Sparks. I'm just fucking Is with him. Is he still man. doing his thing? I don't know. You ain't heard from him. I don't know, but you both sports. And it was hard in his day. He was hard in his day. Yeah. Yeah. Who who did you listen to coming up, though? Coming up? Outside of PMC, of course. You know, Pops had me on the old school music, but when I started jamming my own music, I started jamming that Gates. So you you really was a gay fan? Kevin Gates. You hadn't met him yet, or did you just send the verses over, or what? No, no. um, No, hell no. I was in high school. No, I'm saying like this new song y'all did together. Y'all just sent verses. Yeah, the label sent it to him. So y'all gonna do the video though? Yeah, we're gonna do the video in Houston. And you gonna get to meet him? Mm-hmm. That's gonna I be still hard. I never met him. That's gonna be hard. I grew up on that boy. Shout out to DJ Chose. Chose was just here the other day. Shout out to DJ Chose. And he 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 him and Gage really got a great relationship, great rapport. They do music together. You ever work with him? Uh, I was supposed to. We got a bunch of pictures and shit, but we ain't never. Ain't never hit the studio together. Him. Because you own your own studio, you don't be trying to do nothing with me. I mean, me. but you know, everybody was doing their own thing coming up. So, like, the time I locked in with Chose, you know, I really didn't just have a spark behind me like that. So, like, the spark I got behind me now, I feel like if we get in that blend right now, it'll be a different type of time, you know what I'm saying? How how was it, though, like, like being from Palestine but trying to pave your way and ended up in Houston? What gave you that motivation to move over there and just work with them boys like that? I mean, just you feel like in the country, bro, is, you feel like... You ain't going to really make it out of there, you know, trying to do music. It's hard. You know, you don't got the connections. You don't got the relationships. You don't got the fucking venues, the studios. You don't got access to really none of the stuff that you really need to get out of the game. Uh, I mean, to get out of the streets, get out of the slums, get out of the bottom. So, um... I just came to Houston, really, like I said, I went to Houston on some trying to weld shit, like 18, trying to become a welder and shit, trying to really make my family happy and shit. But I, I, I've been in the streets since high school, so, you know, that shit wasn't for me. It didn't last long, especially, I'm going to tell you what made me quit. Um, I was working a job in a, uh, uh, shout out Ron. Uh, hey, it's our boss. Mm-hmm. Oh, run, oh, run! Boss. Hey, man, make sure you get that right there over there. Hey, shout out. Uh, if you don't move that right there, we gonna do that now. Shout Ron out. giving direction. Oh, shout out Ron at Headworks. <laughs> Ron told me I don't want no job that you would give to no nigga. What? Yeah. 
Real Damn. life. My mama wanted me to sue so I can have a company, but you know what I told her? What'd you tell her? I'm gonna go be a rapper, mama. This shit ain't for <laughs> me, man. I don't wanna sue that, man. I just wanna go be a rapper. Say, when, some when you made that uh, uh, Trill Talk, No Pill Talk artist to watch list, did you, did you see that? Yeah, I seen that. What did you think about it? Uh, shit. It really didn't move me. I appreciate them that they appreciate mentioned them. the nigga. You know but do saying? you think you get your just due in East Texas? Hell no. Like, Why? Like I feel Let's like talk about that. The streets, I feel like like if you know, you know what I mean, you're going to bat for me, you're going to war for me. You know, and really, they really just, certain people just can't fuck with me, you know, if you know, <coughs> you know what I'm saying, if you tune in. But if you're not hip, you just not hip. You know what I mean? Once you get hip, I feel like I'm, I get my due credit for sure. But the more, the bigger this shit get, I feel like I'm getting my respect because it's just, man, it's levels to this shit. And, like, as bad as, I don't care how good you rap, you just got to beat me across the board. Mm. And you feel me? Not just music. Music is only 10% of this game. You got to get familiar with the artists. I'm going and I'm rubbing shoulders with everybody. You feel me? And when we rub shoulders, they going to understand, like, oh, yeah, he one of them, and he not one of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like... He, he the one for sure. And like I say, man, I go stand beside anybody and shit. We're going to blend. we going to blend in. You feel me? And then one thing about it, shit, that ain't nothing different from me. That's real. See, a lot of people feel like the next man is something different. Hey, bro, I'm kicking with my partners that's broke. I'm going to kick with my partners that multimillionaires up 50 M's. One of my partners might be $50 in his pocket. One of them might got 50 million. We're going to get together and we all going to laugh and talk normal. You mm. see what I'm saying? I'm going to bring it together all the way. You feel me? Because I know I'm the one. That's why I feel like in East Texas, they just don't know that shit. They don't know that I'm the one yet. So they don't really, they really feel like in their mind that they the one. But it's when they really realize that I'm the one, they don't want to try to get beside me. And it just might be too late. Wow. So is it, it like, have you tried to work with people in East Texas and they just, it didn't happen? Or do you feel, who's, who's the music that you listen to? I know you and T. Jones just did something together. Yeah, we got some hard shit together. How did, I mean, that's a link right there. So when you, I, I when you love did, Jones. I love T. Jones. So that's what I'm saying. So you don't you feel like you guys can bridge some of these gaps if you feel like there is gaps in East Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like, see what I'm saying? Project, we finna get ready to drop and shit, but... um. I feel like we we'll, somebody gonna have to break through the door, and not just be heard. We gotta bust through the door. Like shout out Mexican OT, he just knocked the door down. Yeah. Like I feel like we gotta knock the door down. <coughs> but also too, I'm not in no rush to get there. Cause when I get on top, I'm gonna stay on top. So it's no rush to get there. Cause the faster you come, the faster you go. Mm -hmm. And like niggas say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's real. real. That's real. And so like I say, I'm not in no rush to get there. I'm going to take my time because it's going to be beautiful when it get there. Kind of like the baby situation. Like the baby with his shit, it was like so beautiful when he blew up because shit, the grind, the, everything he put into it. So when it came, it was way more appreciated with me. Shit, I'm putting the floors in my studio. I'm knocking the walls uh -huh. down. I'm doing a bunch of shit. So when I see big artists like Peasy, shout out Peasy, you know what I mean? Louis Ray, shout out them and shit, Lil Jeremy. All of them coming in there in my they studio going in. recording. Yeah, they recording all night. They I come back, they in there six, seven in the morning. Getting to it. Yeah, but it feels <coughs> good. It feels really good because I know I done put blood, sweat, and tears on these floors that they standing on playing, cracking jokes, and just bullshitting around on. But it feels good because you done sat there and put the grind in and the work in. So yeah, man. I no, I think I think you figuring it out. Like the thing you gotta understand is, like, it's just it's working. It's out working. It's it's staying up them late nights. It's doing the things that you're already doing. It's making people see you because the the body of work that I look at when I research you, it looks professional. It looks like you stand on your, on on top of what you're doing. You might could do a little more, but hey, man, a lot of people not even doing what you're doing. Yeah. He, meet, people not meeting the people you meeting in them same circles. You getting in some of those rooms that these guys want to be in. Yeah, for sure. So you, I think the Houston move probably was good for you, huh? Yeah, for sure. Because it opened the door. How do people respond to you in Houston when you like out at the Galleria Mall, or just out in the back? I ain't gonna lie. I was uh, leaving. I was going to go get some backwoods a couple of days ago and shit. Um, as I'm walking into the store and shit, this guy in his work uniform. Now put in mind, I used to wear. So this work uniform, I'm familiar with this work uniform. Yeah. 
but it was God, bro. Cause wow. You know, I'm walking through the door and my hair flat. I just woke up. You know how you have hair? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit flat. Just woke up, nigga. I'm just trying to grab some backwoods. I ain't got on no socks. I'm trying to go in and come right out. I'm talking about a little, little bit of shorts, man. I'm like, man, I walk in, dude. Like, he hold the door open for me and shit. I walk by and he like, oh, shit. You that rapping, nigga, little Bubba. You feel me? Just pull his phone out and go to record, man. That's hard. And I'm just so like, looking at damn, I ain't ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm they'll, looking at that nigga they'll like. They'll get you at the meat market. I know. Oh, boy. Wherever they see you and they know you, they're going to be like, my mind, I never get to see you again. They're going to I work. I got to get it. I got to get yeah, it right now. Right but now. I remember being in those shoes. And now, like, I walk in the room and I can see whoever. I ain't pulling my phone out. But at the time, like, I, I, I just I appreciated that so much. Because back in the gap, you know, you pull your phone out. You, you just could feel like the person was uncomfortable to take a picture. They didn't want that. Like, I don't never want one of my fans to feel like that. If they pull that phone out on me, I'm going to turn up in that camera for that little short amount of time that he got me for. Because I remember being in them shoes and wanting to get this nigga on camera. Mm -hmm. it's gonna, it's, man, I got people in my phone, NLE Chopper, before he was famous to this day. But I knew who he was. It's still in my phone to this day. Wow. Like, I know how that makes me feel seeing someone that I look up to in the game and shit, or that I just know, like somebody just famous, a celebrity. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.